you guys. So guess what time it is? It is epoxy time. So I have removed the bags from my cups. I'm going to take the lids off of my cups. Again, this one has been drying for several days now. So it's ready to go. And then this is the one today, and I think it's dried up. I'm going to I'm gonna go ahead and give it a shot with the epoxy. And if I didn't let it dry long enough, then we'll get to learn what happens. Uh, and I did this at about um, 10.30 this morning. It is 6.30, so it's been eight hours. So hopefully that's long enough. Um, again, I'm not a pro at these videos. I just started these this week. So bear with me when I move the camera around and maybe adjust the lights and try to do this so that y'all can see it. I'm going to show you my setup here. It's a little different than how I usually do it because of my space restriction. But I have clamped 4x4s. Not 4x4s. I have clamped uh, steel rods to the 2x4 joints in my basement. And it's just... It was just a steel rod that's been clamped and you can do it any way that works for you I've seen some very creative ways that people have been um, setting these up um, I saw one a couple weeks ago it was like a broom set up through the slats in their kitchen chair weighted with I can't remember what it was maybe like a case of water bottles or something whatever you you use uh, you do want to dry it horizontally not vertically because epoxy is self-leveling so it's going to move to the lowest point that it can with gravity and so if you do it vertical it can't level um, you want to do it horizontal and it's just going to spread and you'll start to get drips at the bottom and so you turn it it's going to spread it'll start to drip from the bottom then you turn it and um, that's how you you get that nice even coat on there and I've got two of these set up because I'm going to do two of these cups because we're doing two different types of epoxy and I, the pool noodles are new for me um, I got that idea from from somebody else but I'm just gonna sit them on there I don't have a fancy rotisserie turner like a lot of people do um, again I do these several at a time and I'll actually clamp these to a corner of a table and I'll have a cup on either end and I'll have I'll have two of these clamped so I've got four cups uh, going on this and then because of the tape I've got a place to grab it and turn it here if you didn't tape off the bottom you can turn it here if you don't tape off anything you're gonna have to use um, you know both your hands and get in there and try to turn it that's why I don't like to to leave any area um, untaped I like to have something to hold on to so we're going to get in to starting the application there's going to be some some times where I'm just working and we're going to talk about a couple of the different epoxies that I've used what I liked about them what I didn't like about them um, and we're going to talk a little bit about this whole FDA thing and I want to I want to put a disclaimer out there that I am not a chemist I do not work for the FDA I do not have that kind of um, background. The knowledge that you're going to get from me is from my own personal knowledge, my own personal experience, what I know through my uh, pretty extensive education in cosmetic chemistry. Um, I have a background with that, so you're going to get some of that. And most of us are girls, not all of us, but uh, definitely more females to males in the group. But so. I'm thinking some of y'all can relate to some of the cosmetics um, comparisons that I'm going to make when it comes to FDA and and food safe and all that stuff. So we're going to talk about that kind of all along the way, but I want to go ahead and start with mixing and getting it on there. We're going to work with two different types. So the first one is the one that I've been waiting to come in today. And it is a, a don't go rushing to buy this listen to everything I have to say before you go buy it this one is called max clear okay and if you notice the bottles are different sizes this epoxy is measured at a two to one ratio so a lot of epoxies are a one to one this is a two to one two parts of the epoxy to one part of the hardener 
And so the hardener is always going to be more liquid. It's usually your part B or your part 2. Um, and then the resin itself is going to be thicker. So when this came in today, it was super cold. I had to let it get to room temperature. You can't use this when it's really cold. And it got up to room temperature. Uh, my boyfriend was down here turning a bowl. So it was really loud and there was dust flying everywhere. Uh, so I just practiced on another cup to see how it would go. Um, so I learned a few things with the first one, which I'm glad I did before we filmed this. So we'll get a little information on that. Again, I'm just using solo plastic cups. These are 18 ounce cups, they're really big. You could get away with, with a four ounce cup, like a highball size. Um, I've used, uh, when I first started, I didn't have anything like this, and I do sublimation, and I had a couple mugs that I had messed up on just sitting down here in the basement, and I used it because I knew I was going to be able to throw it out. Um, so I'm going to take a mug, and we're going to go over here, and hopefully, you might not be able to see my numbers, but you'll be able to see my process. So I have a scale. I talked about this in another video. This one's from Harbor Freight. Um, came with a little cover. You could use a kitchen scale, you can use a postal scale, you just want it to be able to go to a tenths of an, of an ounce or grams. I like to use mine on grams just because I'm working with such a small amount. And when I turn it on, it's at zero. And I'm going to place my cup on my scale and then I'm going to tear it so that it goes back to zero. And what that does is it takes off the weight of the cup itself so that my measurement's going to be just what's going into the cup. And I'm not a fan of these bottles. I have to say, um, the opening is really wide and the neck is really short. And so that first pour, when I did that, it was just running down the neck and down the side of the bottle and um, I probably wasted enough to do at least one tumbler that way. So I'm going to look into some pump bottles or some squeeze spout type things. And when you see the other ones that I use, I have put spouts on them. And uh, it makes it a lot easier to measure. So this is, this is kind of ugly, to be honest with you. I'm, I'm a little disappointed. I don't think they're intending for people to be measuring in such small quantities, but um, it's, it's annoying. I'm going to find some caps that will fit this. I have, to, I have to measure and figure out the size of the threads and everything so that I can order the proper cap, but once I find out, I will be letting you know. This is a 48-ounce kit. It was $45.50. I did purchase it from Amazon because I'm a fan of Amazon's A to Z guarantee. Uh, but their website is theepoxyexperts.com, so you can go there and possibly order it. But I'm just going to pour this in here. Oops, I think my scale went off. So, I'm going to pour this in here. And again, I'm measuring in grams. It's messy, and I'm going to go to 10 grams. Okay, so you see how messy that gets on there. Now we're going to go to part B, and again this is 2 to 1, so we want to do 5 grams. So you see how it's on the side of the cup. We want to try to get all that off while we stir. You can see there's hardly anything in that cup. It doesn't take much. You could use a much smaller cup. And so I'm just going to start stirring. Okay. 
You don't want to whip. You don't want to be introducing a lot of air into your epoxy. The first time I did this, I was just stirring with vigor and I had so many bubbles that it looked like foam and I ended up having to throw it in the trash. So you just want to stir. You're going to get a few little air bubbles. That's okay. Make sure you're wiping along the side of the cup. And you just keep stirring. So, I'm going to stir. Again, you don't want to be vigorous. You don't want to be whipping a lot of air into it. Scraping it along the side of the cup. Make sure you get all that mixed in. Anything that you use, you're going to want to throw out. You could technically clean out your container with acetone or another solvent that will clean epoxy, but I don't think it's worth the effort. So I use disposable supplies. And you just want to keep mixing. Make sure you're getting the sides and mixed in. So when you get this mixed, if you see, I don't know if you can see it, along the side of my cup, there's epoxy. You either need to get that in in the beginning when you're mixing. You don't want to use your brush to clean epoxy off the side of the cup because it's not mixed in with the proper ratio. And so it's not going to cure properly. One of the biggest problems with um, these tumblers is people are saying that it's been four, five, six, seven days and my tumbler's still sticky. And that's either because your ratios were off or it wasn't mixed all the way. So we're good and mixed. I'm going to wipe my stick off. And it goes in the trash. My one inch foam brush. And we're going to come over here to my tumbler. Underneath my tumbler, I have a piece of plastic because if it drips, whatever surface you have underneath it, you don't want it to, to ruin that. So I put something underneath. It could be some newspaper. Um, just want to make it thick enough that it's not going to seep through and, and glue. Epoxy is also um, used to adhere things to other things. You don't want to glue your, your paper to the floor or whatever. So got it on my brush, and I'm just going to brush it on. going to go across this way. And I'm making sure that I carry this past my paint line don't want to not get it far enough. I'm just going to turn it a little bit. You see how shiny it's getting already? And I'm going to do more than one coat. So you, your first coat doesn't need to be very thick. It just needs to be um, covering all of the glitter. And if we had not done that triple thick I would be getting all kinds of glitter on my brush, but luckily we did not. We did do the triple thick, so we're not getting the glitter. Turn. Again, start going around. And I'm wondering if I didn't mix enough.
you want to make a little more. So I'm going to mix a little more. I'm going to come over here, turn on my scale, place my cup, tear. I need a new stick because I threw my stick away. I know you can't see everything I'm doing, but I'm doing the same thing I did just a minute ago. So I'm going to measure out. Ten grams. And that out of the way. Again, we're stirring again. The first time you do this, you might want to mix much more than you think you're going to need so that you don't run into this issue. But usually, that's plenty. So I have a total of 30 grams that I've mixed. So 20 of the part A uh, resin and 10 grams of the part B the hardener. So again, I'm just stirring this Cup seems to be doing fine We've got two bubbles, but not too bad to concentrate and then we're just going to go back to brushing our epoxy on our cup that's better Gonna go around even once you've made it all the way around the cup go back around the whole thing again and make sure that you didn't miss any spots but don't feel like you have to use every bit that's in your cup you would rather waste a little bit than do too thick of a coat on your tumbler so and I'm brushing in this direction because I just don't want to pull it off of my stand. It doesn't matter if you go up or down. So we're going around. y'all can see how much this is shining in the video it does not do it justice at all okay so I feel like I have a nice good coat on here and this particular epoxy has about an hour working time at um, 70 degrees so it's gonna be leveling and moving around pretty good for the first hour or so. So I'm going to show y'all something cool. I know you can't see it on the cup right now, but oh, this is my torch. I just picked this one up at Harbor Freight. I think it was maybe $8. Um, but you fill it with butane and you have fire. And so I'm going to use this to pop some bubbles. I know you can't see the bubbles. But because of the friction that's created as the brush is going across the texture of the glitter, it's going to create some bubbles. So you want to do this quickly. 
and I'm just gonna I'm not trying to cook the the epoxy or burn my tape or anything else like that so I'm gonna start it and I'm just gonna go across the tumbler you can do this with a lighter you can do this with um, You could probably do it with a heat gun or a blow dryer. You could even take a straw. You take a straw in your mouth and blow on it to, to pop the bubbles. But this is my favorite. And I mean, come on, it's a torch. So that's pretty awesome. So I'm just going across. Making sure I get all those bubbles. And you might not need to do this. I don't always need to do this, but this one just happens to be a little bubbly. And I can already tell that there's still going to be a little texture on this cup after this coat cures. But that's fine because we're going to let it cure, we're going to add a decal, and then we're going to epoxy it again. So it looks really good. Can y'all see that? Can y'all see how shiny that is? Look at that. That's freaking amazing. Okay. So again, this was the new epoxy that I got today. Max clear grade epoxy resin. It's two to one. Part A is your resin and part uh, B is your hardener. Whatever volume you want to mix, you do twice as much of this one as you do this one. And again, a lot of epoxies are one to one. So just make sure that you're reading the uh, directions and getting um, the two of those, those correct. You're probably going to notice a break in the video, and I'm going to learn how to push these together. But uh, my boyfriend came down here while I was filming, and I choked. Um, so that's why I wasn't as chatty. I've talked to him all day long. I'll talk to y'all all day long. But I can't talk to y'all while he's down here. Um, so hopefully you were able to get enough information, and you can hear me well enough. But this is our first tumbler that we did with the Max Clear, the 2 to 1 epoxy. And it is a thin enough coat that it doesn't really seem to be running too much. Um, so what I'm going to do is just kind of sit here for the next 5 or 10 minutes and just kind of make sure that I'm not getting runny drips or that anything crazy is happening to it and uh, kind of babysit it. And I'm not going to make y'all watch all of that. And I also just got the call that dinner's ready. My 16-year-old's cooked dinner for us tonight. So I am going to kind of eat and spin. And then um, I think we're probably approaching 30 minutes on this video. And I don't want to upload a hour-long video. So we're going to have several parts to the epoxy. Um, but I'm going to try to get the other one videoed. And then I'll upload them uh, sequentially so that they'll both go up around the same time. But I think it's looking pretty freaking amazing. Let me turn the light off and see what happens. Nope. It's not really helping. So, I think if I bring an LED light down when I come back, we'll be able to see that holographic bling bling. So, alright. Um, that's going to be it for this one. And then when we do part two, we will discuss the whole food grade, not to food grade, and all of the different nuances as far as that goes and we're going to do the blue cup and uh, I will post the links and the captions so that you can be able to click straight from this one to the next one and we'll finish it up so I will be back shortly thanks guys